Hi, this is Mike Hibbert back again with another tutorial based on Python. Um, this time around we're going to be dealing with the subject of JSON or JSON, depending on how you like to pronounce it. Um, obviously JSON is a, is a web technology, um, but obviously Python also is a web technology, not just for developing desktop apps or server jobs. We can actually use this alongside things like pylons or uh, Django. So I'm going to just give you a very quick, short overview of of one of the methods of how to to import uh, JSON from website streams and various different URLs, and then. Um, you can pretty much take the principles from this tutorial and apply them to the other types of JSON libraries because um, they all work very similarly in terms of what they actually do. There's usually three steps involved. Um, the first step is usually we, we will pull in some information from a website. Once we've got that raw information, then we'll decode it into the JSON format. And in this case, it will come out in, in terms of lists and dicts in Python, which will be um, embedded in each other. Then the final stage is for us to basically traverse through the various structures that are contained inside of the Python objects that the JSON library will return. So the first step that we need to go through is to actually know what to import. So the, the first library we're gonna import is the URL lib2 library which is basically the library we're going to use to actually connect over the web and pull in the information. The next one is going to be simple JSON. There is another uh, library or module that you can get just called JSON. Um, that's not something I'm going to cover in this tutorial, but the principles are very similar. So once you know how to use simple JSON, You'll, you'll understand the principles behind the other libraries as well because they're all pretty much geared towards the same end result which is you getting the information decoding or encoding and then eventually getting information back and forth between your applications and the web. The next step <clears throat> is I'm actually just going to create a, a variable with the URL that we're going to go in and for the purposes of this tutorial I took the, the basic uh, Twitter API example, straight from Twitter's example pages. Um, we're just gonna pull that in and see what's inside of it. Obviously with our normal programs, when we're testing out projects or we're making test little, little test programs, we always do the, the if name equals main so that we can run whatever codes inside this script and know that at a later date, if we need to, we can then use it as a, as a module somewhere else and if you want to know more about modules have a look in, in my last tutorial and that will give you an in, information on, on how to reuse code that you've developed inside of a, py, Python scripts that you've already written. Our next section is basically us using URL lib to create a request based on the URL that we've defined above here. So we're going to take that string and pass it through and say, we want to create a request for the website and return us a request object. Now, our next step is to create an opener using this library. So we have an object that is the definition of the request we're gonna try and do, but then we have an object that defines how to actually open that. And that's the, the bit that basically uses things like HTTP or the HTTPS uh, protocols just to talk over the web. So the opener understands how that sort of stuff works. The next bit to do is to use our opener to open the request and assign it to our variable F. And very simply, the next step is just to basically say, okay, Use the JSON, the JSON module to load the contents of that request, which is basically text at this point, and put it into an object, which will basically be our, our, our set of lists and dicts and various other variables that are all in Python format. So this 
section here is, is basically taking the strings that we've pulled in from the website and converting it into Python based data. Whether that's <clears throat> whether that's in integers or whether that's strings or whether that's dicts or lists, that will all get converted in that process. So just to kind of demonstrate how what we do with those those things once we're once we're done. Um, more times than not, this JSON uh, variable will return as a list. And it'll be a list of various responses from, from the, the URL. So we're going to roll through the various responses in the same format as we would normally roll through a list, which is for item in this JSON list. And we're going to say, in the item, which is a dict, create or, or get the get the section that is called create at and just print it down into here. So it's probably going to come out in this window here. So we'll watch for that. The next thing is we want to get the text, which is probably in terms of Twitter, it's what it's the text that you'll probably see is a tweet. So Let's just give that a quick run so we can look inside the JSON object and give you an idea of what kind of data structure we're getting from this particular situation. As always, I'm using Wing IDE because obviously it's got this great area here called stack data, which allows us to, to drill down in data during the debug mode. And we can have a look and see what's inside. So let's just have a peek. So we've stopped just before the for loop is about to run. And you'll notice over here in our area, under locals, we've got the JSON object there. And if we open that up, you can see there's two dicts that have been returned. If I look outside the first one, it has various things like contributors, entities. There's our created at part, which is just a a string containing the date and time. If we look down further, there's our text. And you can see that's just a string as well. It's, it's the contents of the tweet. You'll notice also that there's these obvious, there's these other parts which are called entities. And if you look inside of that, entities is another dict full of various different things. So you've got um, a list of hashtags, URLs, user mentions, which you get from Twitter, um, and various different other bits and bobs that you find in there. You also have contributors, which contains one element to a list. You can pretty much tell what these are by the brackets that are used, obviously, because Python uses the square bracket for a list curly brace for a dict. So in that way, if you're not sure what the, the JSON is that you're going to be pulling out of that web service or, or the URL, then you've got a, a, a fair chance of being able to find out what the structure will be if you just basically put your script into debug mode using Wing IDE. And then have a drill down and have a look inside what the, what the, uh, the variables actually contain. Okay, so if we just step through the code now, we should be able to see, get the created at, we should see the date printed out here and then the text for the tweet. So let's do that. There you go, there's the first date and the tweet. But notice in our JSON object over here, we haven't just got one item in this list, we've got another item, so let's just step through and see what's inside of that. Okay, so another tweet and the text, something about TCO soon be changing in length. So <clears throat> we keep on stepping through, that's the end of our program. So we got two tweets out of that JSON response. Now, how do we drill down into those smaller variables that we were looking at, like entities, for instance? 
Well, what we do is we use um, the, the feature of Python language, which is to chain methods. Now, if, you've, if, you've, if you haven't seen chaining methods, what it means is, if I just show you the code, we can, in, in our variable item, say, get the entities part of that item. Then we can say get again on top of that. And this is basically us putting another function method applied to what this function has returned. So we apply another function again. So we're saying get entities and from inside of entities get the URLs section. And then from there, we're saying get us the first item in the list that URLs it contains. And then finally, get the URL that's inside of that first item. So let's just have a quick peek inside, just so we can see exactly what that is using the debugger. So in our first section, we go into entities, URLs, we can see there it's a list. And inside the first item, item zero, we can see there that has a URL section and that literally is just a string. So we're saying get entities, get this section from inside of our item, get the URLs list, give us the zero item out of that list, which is returns a dict to us. And again, the method on dict is to get. So then we use URL to get that string out of this URL, this first items dict. So then that should then print this. However, if you look inside of the first one, we notice that URLs doesn't actually have anything. So this might cause us an error. And this is probably a good case for us to stick something like a, a, an exception handle in here. So I'm probably going to expect to get an error at this point or some kind of message back saying that doesn't exist in the first section of the JSON, but we'll get a success result from that. So let's just go through that and see what happens. Our first one, nothing happened. And we get an error over here. Index error, list index out of range. So what can we do if we have inconsistent JSON feeds? One method is for us to go try. Okay. And then accept, print no URL found. And that will stop the, the program from crashing completely and doing this index error. It'll put out a, a message saying no URL found. And then in all other cases, when that URL is found, it will print it out for us. So let's give that another try. Okay. So let's step through that for the first time, which should crash. No URL found. So that's successfully handled it without crashing the program. And now it's proceeding on to the next part of the data, which actually does contain something. And you can see there it's printed the URL. So in the case of JSON and actually in the case of XML as well, you may find that some parts of the data is missing and in, in, in other parts it's not. And the best way to handle that is for me personally, I've found is to stick exceptions in there so that you can know what to do when things go wrong or when there's inconsistent data. 
that's the end of this tutorial. Um, I hope that was informative and helpful for you. Um, if you like this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to get updates on further tutorials in, in the future, um, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.